Zelensky agreed not to withdraw Russian troops from Ukrainian territory. At least, this point disappeared from the agenda of the Swiss summit a few days before it began. Overall, it should be noted that either the comedian is no longer funny, or the shows have become, well, too expensive. There were far fewer people wanting to listen to Zelensky's stand-up than he expected. The declared attempt to form an international coalition and present a united ultimatum to Russia fell apart as the summit date approached. The attempt to pressure Russia, the attempt to gather some alternative conference in Switzerland, widely publicized, heavily advertised. Today, it has essentially ended in complete failure. The events of the preceding days speak volumes. The faces of the G7 leaders showed that their own problems and the consequences of the failed European Parliament elections worried them much more than Zelensky's issues. The American publication Politico described the situation with a very succinct headline, Six Lame Ducks and Georgia Maloney. Indeed, the sister of the Brothers of Italy, the only one who emerged from the electoral battle with dignity. And now she is more or less calmly awaiting Macron's flip and Biden's decline. As for the invited star, she was offered $50 billion. It seemed like a luxurious fee for a corporate event, and this time they didn't even make her wear leggings and heels. But the devil, as always, is in the details. All the money is alone, and that's considering that the gentleman is already up to his ears in debt, which no one wants to restructure. They just postponed it for us. So if you were supposed to pay back $10 in 2020 to 10 in 2023 and 10 in 2024, they postponed it and said, in September 2024, you'll pay back 30 all at once. In our equation, 30 is roughly 1.06 or 1.1 trillion rivnias. Ukraine has to pay this in 2024. The atmosphere of the gala dinner in Switzerland was considerably dampened by the peace initiatives of Beijing and Moscow. China's foreign minister Wang Yi called for a genuine peace conference on Ukraine and Vladimir Putin outlined his vision for ending the conflict. Attention, question, whose agenda was ultimately discussed in the corridors of the Swiss summit? The direction of the meeting took a very unexpected turn. We know that Russia must win this war. Oh, sorry, Ukraine must win this war. Trudeau's involuntary performance had to be smoothed over with an even more absurd initiative. A fan of Ukrainian Nazis, unexpectedly for the entire honest public, during the group photo session, barely restraining his right hand, shouted the greeting of the butchers, Ukraine. Glory. A nervous atmosphere and a sense of complete uncertainty hung in the air of the Swiss summit for two days. Few understood the purpose of what was happening, and only political tourists enjoyed another business trip and eagerly awaited the lavish buffet. Over a glass of sparkling wine, they managed to discuss the Istanbul agreements. The New York Times thoughtfully published the entire package on the day the summit opened. Everyone emphasized the lack of meaning in what was happening, though they didn't openly say it. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, we understand well that a peace process without Russia is unthinkable. Long-term solutions must include both sides. As an international structure, we can help pave this path. That's why we are here. One day we will be able to achieve real progress on specific issues. By the afternoon of the second day, information began to come in about the gradual departure of the main participants of the summit, not waiting for its conclusion. The path to the plains was first trodden by U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris herself, Urgent matters also arose for Chancellor Schultz. His morning departure was reported by the German agency DBA. Let's just speak plainly today. Of course, the event in Switzerland is completely meaningless at this historical stage. This relates to what we've been talking about for the past six months. We promised you that there would be endless talks about peace, but due to the mismatch of the minimum requirements of the parties, all these talks would be fruitless. What we see happening now is exactly what this means. Ukraine has become an extremely expensive partner and, more depressingly for sponsors, ineffective. Today, everyone involved is thinking only about how to come out of the situation as a beneficiary with their head 
held high. But in Kyiv, they still don't understand that the overall bill for this dinner will have to be paid by many generations of Ukrainians. About the tectonic shifts, Andrei Seich in the screenshot section.